After the lawsuit against him and Chris Larson was dropped, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, said he supported the Biden administration's efforts to reach out to the cryptocurrency business more. This is even more true now that the lawsuit has been dropped. The case is still in the remedies part of the trial at this point for now. It is expected that the result will be reached in the next few months in spite of this. Ripple wants the Biden government to ask Gary Gensler to quit his job. People have said that Gensler is the worst thing that could happen because of cryptocurrency. Garlinghouse believes that the Biden administration should ask Gensler to step down if they really want to make a change and finally listen to the crypto voters. People who work in the cryptocurrency business have been getting to know the Biden administration. Since the charges against Gensler were dropped and the case against him was thrown out, he believes that the most important thing they can do is to demand that Gensler quit his job. By vetoing a law that was thought to be pro-cryptocurrency, Vice President Joe Biden's government is trying to keep people from leaving him, but it's possible that this help is too little, too late. Garlinghouse thinks that the Biden administration is acting this way because they agree with the crypto voters and are ready to do something about it. Since the engagement effort began about two weeks ago, Biden's interactions with the business have been very different from what they were before when they were done from a distance. Sources with direct knowledge of the matter who spoke to the block say that Biden's previous interactions with the business, which were done from a distance, are very different from this contact. The effort to get people involved began about two weeks ago, and it comes at a time when Biden's team is becoming more aware of how worries about crypto could affect the election for president. Joe Biden's government has been wrongly playing to a group of voters that doesn't exist. This means that the election is likely to be close. The re-election team has called a number of crypto experts, including some of the leaders of Ripple, to talk about what's going on. This is done. Done. In addition to the engagement efforts that are already going on, he believes that Vice President Joe Biden's government has been catering to a group of voters that doesn't exist. They are now realizing that it is too little, too late to fix the problem. So that they can talk to more people about the issue, the re-election team has called out to many crypto professionals, including some of the founders of Ripple. For Garlinghouse, the lawsuit that was brought against Gensler has already been thrown out. And now everyone knows what the law says about XRP. So Garlinghouse thinks that the Biden government is doing the right thing by making Gensler hand in his resignation. Taking everything into account, the Biden administration's efforts to work with the cryptocurrency business are a huge step towards addressing the problems that the cryptocurrency community faces and the possible effects those problems could have on the upcoming presidential election. People have said bad things about the government because the Biden administration refused to delete the controversial SAB 121 bulletin from the Securities and Exchange Commission. This bulletin wants to make companies that hold cryptocurrency follow certain financial rules. Several people have said they don't like this method, saying it might make banks less likely to offer custody services. The block's request for comment outside of normal business hours was not answered, was sent. The Biden team did not respond right away. The new relationship between the Biden administration and experts in digital assets comes soon after crypto supporters spoke out against the plan to veto the repeal of Senate Bill 1221. SB 1221 is a controversial piece of crypto legislation that has been criticized for making financial institutions less likely to hold crypto assets. The Bloc asked the Biden campaign for comment outside of usual business hours, but they didn't answer right away. The bill that would undo Senate Bill 121 was still passed by the House of Representatives. Some Democrats chose to go against the party line, even though most Democrats weren't really in favor of cryptocurrency. The bill was passed by both the House of Representatives and the Senate, which was a big step forward for Vice President Joe Biden's government. There was a change in tone after the Trump campaign said it would accept cryptocurrency payments. This, along with recent comments by former President Donald Trump at the 2024 Libertarian National Convention that were both pro-cryptocurrency and anti-CBDC, has led some to wonder if Vice President Joe Biden will make this happen. However, a well-known person in the business world named Brad Garlinghouse has expressed his worries about the Biden administration's choice to reject Senate Bill 121 and what this will mean for the cryptocurrency industry. The government of Vice President Joe Biden has been accused of lying and misleading people about why they chose to veto the bill. The bulletin has been talked about a lot over the past year because some people in the cryptocurrency business are worried that it will make it harder for banks to protect digital assets. The government has been in a certain way, even though they are aware of the bad things that will happen because of this choice, there is no clear reason why they will keep using their veto power against the bill. The ongoing dispute in the U.S. over the blockchain business is being talked about, especially the veto of a bill that former President Trump signed into law. The Speaker of the House thinks it would have been better for him to change his mind about the veto instead of having to deal with people who are mad about the law. 
there is no peer in anti-crypto voter block. Still, there is a pro-crypto voter block that would have made him look like he was giving up and was weak. The speaker believes that two-thirds of both chambers of business must vote in favor of the law in order to overturn the veto. On the other hand, the speaker isn't sure this will happen because he or she doesn't think anyone will vote. For this reason, there aren't enough Democrats who are willing to support cryptocurrency. On the other hand, almost all Republicans fully back cryptocurrency. In this case, one side is making things difficult. This is known as calling a spade the speaker spade. Also says that the current state of criminal charges against former President Trump has contributed to the rise in support for cryptocurrencies. While recent events may have helped Trump in the polls, they have not always made him speak out against cryptocurrency. In fact, it has helped him keep his job. While the Speaker doesn't personally believe in cryptocurrency, he thinks that the government's shift towards supporting it is just the result of the way politics are going today. In addition, the Speaker knows that Brad Gehringhaus should ask Gary Gensler to step down from his job. They say that the Biden government has changed its mind about what it needs to do. It's also interesting to see how much the government has changed its mind about Bitcoin after being strongly against it for years. It doesn't look good for them, especially since the last two weeks polls have been very close. Due to the fact that the speaker is not a business expert, until the next meeting they strongly advise against buying or selling anything because of what they say or do. There is no good reason to do so.